Well, what you can see on your screen right now may seem as just some numbers written down without any meaning. So let's attach some meaning to it. Suppose we say that 45 people, so this represents the number of people working for 12 hours a day can actually do some work which is equivalent to 500 units in 25 days. So I repeat, 45 people working 12 hours a day complete 500 units of work in 25 days. The question now is, if instead of 45 people we have 30 people who are going to work for 15 hours a day and they have to produce 300 units of work then how many days would be required? If you want to solve such a problem then we need to go through some concepts of ratios and variation and once we do that this problem can be solved in absolutely no time. So let's move on to some concepts of ratios and variation. Let's understand what is a ratio. Suppose we say that a vessel contains 24 liters of milk and 60 liters of water. And if we want to differentiate between a term called as ratio and another term called as a fraction. So we have said that a vessel contains 24 liters of milk and a vessel contains 60 liters of water. And now if I want to write a ratio then I would say that milk is to water would be 24 is to 60 which is nothing but 2 is to 5. So as a ratio I would say milk and water in this vessel will be in the ratio 2 is to 5. But now if I want to understand in terms of a fraction. I know that in this vessel 2 parts out of a total of 7 parts is milk and 5 parts out of the total of 7 parts is water. And hence as a fraction I would say milk is two seventh of the vessel whereas water is five seventh of the vessel. So when we talk in terms of a ratio it is simply how much milk is to how much water but when we talk in terms of a fraction we say how much milk out of the total and how much water out of the total. If we get these two concepts clear then calculating using a ratio when a ratio is given and how to convert it into a fraction to find the necessary values becomes very very simple if this is very clear in our minds. Let's look at a few properties of ratios. We're going to go through five properties. Let's go through them in order one after the other. So let's take the first one. If we are given A upon B is equal to C upon D is equal to E upon F. Three ratios are given as equal. Then each ratio would be equal to the sum of all the numerators divided by the sum of all the denominators. This is commonly referred to as property of equal ratios. And this need not be restricted to three ratios. You may have any number of ratios as equal then each ratio would be equal to sum of all the numerators upon sum of all the denominators. Let's look at the second one. If it's given that A upon B is equal to C upon D, then we have A plus B upon A minus B is equal to C plus D upon C minus D. If you notice what we've done is we've just taken the sum of the numerator and the denominator divided by the difference of the numerator and the denominator on each side and they would be equal. This property is commonly known as componendo dividendo and is extremely useful in problems. Let's look at the third one. We now have three ratios where it's given a upon 7 is equal to b upon 5 is equal to c upon 4 and what we need to do is we just need to write down the ratio for a is to b is to c then it simply becomes 7 is to 5 is to 4. Whatever was there in the denominators can be if I take this as equal to k then each one would become a would become equal to 7k b would be equal to 5k c would be equal to 4k and hence when I take it as a ratio k would get cancelled and that's what we get. 
now instead of a upon 7 we have 7a this actually can be given or stated in a question as 7 times a's amount is equal to 5 times b's amount is equal to 4 times c's amount and if the total value for a b c put together is given and if the question asked is how much does a have or how much does b have or so on then we would start with this and our next step would be hence a is to b is to c which would be equal to 1 upon 7 is to 1 upon 5 is to 1 upon 4 that would be our first step and now if you want to convert that into simple numbers and not fractions what we would do is take the LCM of 7, 5 and 4 and multiply each fraction by that LCM and hence this would get simplified as 20 is to 28 is to 35 so that would be the final answer now there is another way of directly arriving at this particular answer when I go back to this and if I want to write a value corresponding to A then I just cover 7A I look at the other two and multiply the two numbers that I can see and that would be the value equivalent to A if I want to write the value corresponding to B I cover this part of B and multiply these two numbers 7 and 4 that becomes the value corresponding to B and similarly for C if I cover this then 7 into 5 which is 35 becomes the value corresponding to C now when you use this method it is possible that the ratio that you obtain here may not be in the least possible form there may be something common which you can just cancel off and hence express it in terms of the least possible form finally let's look at this kind of an example where you have A is to B is 3 is to 5 and B is to C is 4 is to 9 and the question asked is how much is A is to B is to C now if you want to combine these two ratios then we need to first check what is common in the two ratios which here is B and look at the value equivalent for B so here the value equivalent is 5 and here it is 4 what we would do is we would convert the value corresponding to B into the same value in both these ratios and that we would do by taking the LCM of 5 and 4 which is 20 so we would write A is to B as if 5 is converted into 20 which means multiplied by 4 3 would be converted to 12 so this would be 12 is to 20 similarly this would be 20 is to 45 and now that the value for B becomes the same in the two ratios we can straight away combine it as 12 is to 20 is to 45 so the trick here is find out which particular variable is common the value corresponding to that variable should be converted to the same number and then simply combine the three numbers to get one single ratio for A is to B is to C what do we mean by proportion so if we are told that four terms A, B, C and D are in proportion which is very commonly stated as this then it simply means that A upon B is equal to C upon D so in other words if in a problem you are told that A upon B is equal to C upon D then it means that A, B, C, D are in proportion now what is the implication of this if we cross multiply we would get a into d is equal to b into c and this is very very commonly referred to as product of the means is equal to product of the extreme so what that means is when we take four terms in proportion the two n terms are referred to as the extremes and the two middle terms are referred to as the means and hence we say product of the means is equal to product of the extremes now a variation of proportion could be an example of continued proportion so if we say a b c are in continued proportion then it would simply mean that a upon b is equal to b upon c since b gets continued it's referred to as continued proportion and hence if again we cross multiply we would get b square is equal to ac 
in continued proportion b is referred to as the mean proportional or it can also be called as the geometric mean of a and c so this is what is the meaning of proportion which would mean a upon b equal to c upon d and a variation of that for continued proportion would simply mean a upon b is equal to b upon c having seen ratios and proportion let's now move on to a third concept called as variation now what do we mean by variation there are two kinds of variation that we would look at something called as direct variation and something else called as inverse variation so if we say a varies directly as b which is stated as a varies directly as b in this manner if there is direct variation then what that means is if a increases then it implies that b would also increase hence direct variation an increase in a would automatically cause an increase in b a decrease in a would cause a decrease in b now if we have to solve this then we can also say a is equal to k into b where k is nothing but the constant of proportionality now if a is equal to k into b and if i take a specific value of a1 for that specific value a1 i would get a specific value b1 so i can say a1 is equal to k into b1 and similarly a2 is equal to k into b2 now if i divide these two i would get a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 because k being constant would get cancelled out so any problem of variation for example in direct variation if we say a varies directly as b then in a problem you can directly move on to this step avoiding the constant completely and hence out of these four terms if any three are given the fourth can be calculated a slight variation of this kind of an example could be if a varies directly as b and c then we would state instead of a varies only as b we would say a varies as b multiplied by c and then from there if i jump to this particular point i would say a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 multiplied by c1 upon c2 so if i have multiplied this by c i would multiply this by c1 upon c2 so what this now tells us out of these six terms if five are given the sixth can be calculated now this is direct variation inverse variation would be stated as if a varies inversely as b it means a is proportional to 1 upon b now if i use this logic or if i go back to this point when a increases b will decrease and when a decreases b will increase hence inverse variation moving on to such a point i had straight away jump from a varies as b into c because it was direct as a1 upon a2 equal to b1 upon b2 into c1 upon c2 so now if it is inverse variation we can straight away say a1 upon a2 is equal to b2 upon b1 because this is inverse variation so once again whether it is a question of direct variation or inverse variation questions can directly be solved without calculating the constant of proportionality because calculating this would only mean one additional calculation to be done which is not really required so now that we've gone through the concepts of ratios and variation let's go back to the example that we had started off with we had looked at this example where we said 45 people working 12 hours a day can complete 500 units of work in 25 days so if now we have 30 people working 15 hours a day and if they are supposed to complete 300 units of work how many days are required we're going to make use of the concepts of variation out here and we're going to solve this problem using what is commonly known as the chain rule question asked is the number of days so obviously the number of days that we need to find out would be related to the previous number of days that we have and hence let's start with the number 25 and see how to move beyond that we're going to relate each parameter with the number of days 
So if we now look at the number of people, earlier it was 45 and now it is 30. So we can say that the number of people has become two-third of what it was earlier. And since people would be inversely proportional to the number of days, what do we mean by that? Since the number of people goes down, the number of days required would go up. And if the number of people has become two-third of earlier, then the number of days would become three by two of earlier. And hence we multiply the earlier number of days by three by two. We've accounted for the number of people. Let's look at the number of hours. If we look at these two values, we can say that the number of hours actually changes from 12 to 15, which means if I take this as 4 and this as 5, then the number of hours has become 5 by 4 of the earlier value. Once again, number of hours would be inversely proportional with respect to number of days, which means if number of hours increases per day, number of days required would be lesser. Hence, if the number of hours has become 5 by 4 of earlier, then the effect here would be that the number of days required will become 4 fifth of earlier. So we are multiplying further by 4 by 5. Let's now take the third parameter, which is the number of units of work to be done. The number of units becomes three-fifth of earlier. Since the number of units or work to be performed goes down, number of days required would also go down. So there is a direct variation. And since the number of units to be done becomes three-fifth of earlier, the number of days required would also become three-fifth. And hence now if we solve this, we would actually find the answer to how many days are required. And what we can simply do here is 25 cancels off. And hence, the number of days required would be 18 days. So this is how we can solve a question of this type using the concepts of ratios and variation. So looking at whether there is a direct variation or an inverse variation and accordingly calculating the, question, the value of the question asked.